I know Beckham. You get, get paid a lot. Oh, no shit. No. Yeah, I'd pay back. Special guest, um, Nick Shackleford, right? He, he was behind, you know, some of the like fastest growing like brands that you can see like on Facebook that are like blowing up, like very fast scaling, very profitable. And overall, like in terms of the strategy, like he's a guy, like a lot of the brands, like it's kind of like he's a guy when, when wow. you, when you want to scale, you go to Nick. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, I, want to, I wanted to, um, to ask you, Nick, like, so today in your presentation, you mentioned, um, so a lot of your content, it's so, Obviously, like Facebook and paid traffic is yes. is big part of the strategy, but influencers and and kind of like that part yes. is also what you pay a lot of attention to, right? Oh, completely, because as you know, you've you've run plenty of Facebook audiences. Yeah. The issue is, you once it starts serving, you're mm -hmm. only going to get the same people over and over. Yeah. Even if you're using a lookalike yeah. or a one percent versus a ten percent, yeah. it's the same people. So we're able to log into an influencer's account, which mm -hmm. that's the main tactic, yeah. right? You make they make the content mm -hmm. for us, and then once they post it, they're organic. We get to see what's happening on the back end, which normally you don't get to do that. Yeah. But since we have access to it, whether mm -hmm. it's a trackable link mm -hmm. or we're just seeing the fact that the swipe up rates are tremendous, yeah. we're able to leverage that and go, okay, that influencer, I can get their audience. Now it's already warm. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when I turn on the ads and uh -huh. I remark that same creative that it's already working mm -hmm. back to their audience and I just put our dollars behind it, mm -hmm. it's scaling warm traffic. Mm -hmm which is something that anybody coming here, coming to Q4, coming to a major yeah. holiday, that's why I promote and I really believe mm -hmm. that even if it's a micro-influencer or someone mm -hmm. creating the content for you, yeah. it's, a, it's something that we can use mm -hmm. forever. And I, I was talking just a uh, just few minutes ago with Alex Brown from DFO Global. And so, I mean, as you know, like they do like a lot of like direct response offers, but now like they see this shift that is like brands, like brand building is, is kind of like what has to be done. Like exactly. if you want to like, to, to maintain the company profitable and growing like long term. Sure. You see the same trend? Of course, because it, I would say 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. even a little bit 2018, and there might be some people claiming this now, mm -hmm. but drop shipping, when winning on a viral product, mm -hmm. it's an impulse buy. Yeah. How do they buy more? Yeah. Are they going to buy more? Do they care about your mm -hmm. brand? Most likely not. Mm -hmm. So if you can put the same investment at the same time yeah. into building what I call, it's a, it's a buzz term, but brand affinity, yeah. all it means is just people that give a shit about their product or mm -hmm. brand, mm -hmm. they're gonna stay with you and buy much more. Mm -hmm. Versus me going, oh, you bought my makeup, uh -huh. cool, now you bought my cleaner. Uh -huh. But they don't care about the brand, they just want the new trendy yeah, product. Yeah, yeah. As a rise, it's like maybe just price consideration. It's and it, and then you compete on price, which is always like just the way Race to the, the bottom. bottom. Yeah. Exactly, you're absolutely correct there. And I don't wanna go there. If I can leverage an influencer that someone might love. Mm -hmm. I don't have, me as the brand, I don't yeah. have to do anything because he already loved them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's very important. I, I see you have the sunglasses, uh, the glasses from Deep, yeah. which, which is one of also like one of the brands that just like, and oh. you know, I'm seeing like all of these case studies, brands that are just like, and probably you've been behind all of them. <laughs> <laughs> some, 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 but so for Diff, that's a specific one, right? Yeah. This a uh, product, that anybody can wear and it's visual instantly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All I need them to do, you need to take your pictures, talk about the things, mm -hmm. good fit, it doesn't hurt my nose, anything mm -hmm. simple, like a value proposition that an influencer can speak to, mm -hmm. it's great content. And that's all I care about because think about it. If you have a small business and you're uh -huh. just starting out, who's making the content? Maybe your team, maybe yeah. an outsourced guy that you, you pay for. Yeah, and they do like for hundreds of different companies and they yeah. have. Two, you get two pieces of content yeah. and then who makes edits? Yeah. And you know, if you're going to scale, it's tons of content, yeah. iteration, iteration. Yeah. yeah. You can use DCT, split test, but the issue is if you don't have consistent content coming mm -hmm. in, that you aren't having to shoot your yeah. team. We already talked about well, we're, uh, in Ukraine where the, our team is mm -hmm. based. They can create tons and tons of content. And they do video as well. Yes, but here's the issue. Uh -huh. If they make the video, all the people look like they're from Ukraine. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I'm selling in America. Oh, so there's a little bit of a disconnection. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So if I, if I have to have US-based yeah. influencers, US-based yeah. people yeah, 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 making yeah. content, they'll, they'll chop up and I'll send them all my pieces uh -huh. and be like, here's what's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need this in the beginning, I need this uh -huh. in the middle, put that in the end. Uh -huh. Then they can make my edits. And that's where I found that they're the best at doing because they're so creative. Their vision is, they, they get what's working now, uh -huh. and I don't have to give them, uh, oh, here's my ideas. I just go, uh -huh. I need this. Uh -huh. Make sure you create yeah. that. Cool. Now, how, how do you find these people? How do you find these like, good like, employees? So I, I'm very lucky on this situation. Uh -huh. so, uh, you know, I've been traveling for the past three years uh -huh. speaking. So people, someone like yourself, where you're like, hey, I want to go talk. 
Uh-huh. And then once you start talking, you're like, oh, I have a really good guy that does this. Yeah, and yeah, I go, yeah. Introduce me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if it, if it makes sense and the uh-huh. relationship's great, which is, that's why I met Dimitri. Uh-huh. Dimitri is my number one uh, creative lead in uh-huh. Ukraine. This man is so brilliant. But yet, no one would have known that he was there if I didn't get an introduction from James. Okay. And so uh, James introduces uh-huh. me. Our relationship's fantastic. Uh-huh. And he, Dimitri is like, hey, you want more business? I was uh-huh. like, no, do you want more business? Yeah. Where's all your family? Where's all your friends? Mm-hmm. And now we have an office of about 25 people that are just wow. cranking content. Jeez, full time. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't visited just yet. But it's, 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 from what I see and from the meetings I'm having, uh-huh. it's very full. Let's talk about snow. Okay. <laughs> Is that what you're working on, like snow, uh, Josh? S- of course. So yeah. They're one of them, right? Uh-huh. So there's the three that I would love to talk about is obviously snow, yeah. diff, and then obviously pup socks. Yeah. One that we yeah. absolutely just crushed. Snow right now is in an interesting point uh-huh. because during summer, uh-huh. it's, in, it's hard to sell a high ticket item yes. when it's not around a major gifting, mm-hmm. gifting opportunity. So what is, the, what is the holiday we have to play within? Uh, summer. Fourth of July, right? We have Fourth of July, but that's not like... It is the only holiday we get to deal with, uh-huh. but... Our, does 4th of July make you want to buy teeth whitening? No, not much. No, no, no. no. But what it, what it does make it, it lends itself to brands that we work with, like Kula. Kula is uh-huh. uh, skincare, skin yeah. cream, right? Uh-huh. So now we can do a partnership with Snow and go like, you get Kula? Uh-huh. Okay, here's your discount with Snow. Same oh, with, okay. We had National Glasses Day about, I would say, a, it was within, no, it was last month. Uh-huh. So now we have Diff and Snow doing a list, a list rent uh-huh. and blasting out to their audiences. Because oh. that is the way that you... We put so much money uh-huh. into growing the brand, uh-huh. and now we're able to like leverage. Okay, here's how big here's how big our email list is. Yeah, here's how much money we're spending on yeah. paid, ast- paid social. Give me your audience. Yeah, do you use like uh, platforms like Tap Forward, like Vogue? Or- so yeah. I've used Tap Forward before, uh-huh. but thankfully, as an agency person, uh-huh. I'm able to I can share the audiences oh, okay. with discretion. Uh-huh. I go like, Hey, Josh, Chad, the two brand owners. Yeah. I think your audience would make perfect sense for this one. Mm-hmm. Let's run some tests. Nobody has to see data. No yeah. one touches consumers. And yeah. I don't I don't really know if it's against terms and services, uh-huh. sure. But if you approve and everything is understood yeah. like everybody understands the contract, yeah. no problem. Good. How do you, so I see so many like variations of the content for, you know, Facebook ad library, obviously. Like you know. <laughs> Oh, you're spying. Yeah, you're spying. man. Always. <laughs> and so the like for snow, right? So, so so many types of content you have like and most of them I see like faces, right? Is that kind of like you need to have like faces, right? On because it, that causes like higher engagement, like testimonials, like these influencers. Like, is that kind of like your typical type of content? That- well, so if you if you see the trend of the products that I've found great success uh-huh. within, is it's leveraging the platform. And I talked about this. Uh-huh. Facebook and Instagram are very human. Yeah, it's very yeah. me and you. It's mm-hmm. it's meant for me to talk to yeah. you, not you to talk to Snow. Yeah. So the least the the less we can do uh-huh. with putting Snow and the, just the brand name into uh-huh. it, the more we, they're gonna feel comfortable buying from it. So mm-hmm. if you look at our main picture, and it, it might have changed, but the last time I checked, it was a woman uh-huh. smiling. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the snowflake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're seeing, and same when we do with our supplement companies. Uh-huh. It's never just the logo. Uh-huh. I don't wanna talk to the logo, I wanna talk to the guy that is the person behind, and who is it supposed to benefit. Uh-huh. So every brand I talk to him, I go, do a split test uh-huh. between what your hero image is of just a person in the product yeah. or not. So if you saw the talk, right? The woman yeah, yeah, yeah. was doing the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her face is here and the ring is right here. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's organic. It's natural that I want to talk to you consistently. Yeah. So I, I will agree with you. I think if you're going to run good paid ads uh-huh. or good traffic and you're not putting a smile or you're not putting a face in, uh-huh. for snow, it's teeth. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah, to show yeah. the teeth, man. Uh, and even for, say, like a skin clay mask, uh-huh. a, a brand that we work with called All Your Skin, uh-huh. if it doesn't show her wearing it, yeah. it's not going to do anything. Wow. And so, um, and for, for brands, like, so is that like typical for every brand to have these like cycles, like low, like lower sales, right? For example, summertime and mm-hmm. then like it's Q4, obviously, like probably sales are higher, right? So oh, for sure. how do you kind of like, um, so you obviously like you do you low, lower ad spends on during like summertime? Um, I would say if you... Or you still like it, invest it, it, into brand building? Like, I think that's a generality to say uh-huh. that everything is going to go down because uh-huh. we do have peak moments. Yeah. You have Mother's Day, Father's yeah. Day, graduation, mm-hmm. Fourth of July. So what I would do, if I were to work with a brand, uh-huh. it's going, okay, let's look at your content calendar. Yeah. Okay. What are the major Hallmark holidays or what uh-huh. we call it in California? It's like Hallmark is a, cre- is a, a, a gift. Uh, sorry. Hallmark is uh-huh. a, uh, a card yeah. that you give to anybody. So a Hallmark holiday is basically an American holiday that we manufactured mm-hmm. to sell shit. 
Yeah. So I can map that out yeah. sometimes. And then we look at brand collabs or uh -huh. exclusive drops. Okay. Because nobody likes to get a discount uh -huh. and if consistent discounts over and over and over. And we ran through this with Diff. Uh -huh. Diff was what we like to call it at the time was overly discounting to uh -huh. produce high more, to produce revenue. Uh -huh. But when you produce revenue on discounting products, what are you training the audience to do? Oh, search for another discount. Exactly. I'm not going to buy regular. I'm not going to buy full price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Google LTV. It. Exactly. <laughs> Bullshit. So I'm going no, no, no. If we can do an exclusive drop saying, "Hey, I'm going to do a number one, I'm going to do a number one club. Uh -huh. You got to be on my VIP list. Yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. already sign up for that. Uh -huh. Now I don't even have to waste dollars on ads. Now yeah. maybe I'll waste dollars uh -huh. to acquire my lead, but I'm sending my email first. Oh, okay. And then I can turn on my remarketing audiences. It's the same stuff I love to talk about. Okay. Because why? Why would you spend all the time? You're right. It's hot. Uh -huh. What am I buying right now? I might buy shoes. Uh -huh. um, I might buy some supplement products. Some active. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, but if for a for a physical product, there's no reason why I need to buy more mm -hmm. of uh, on uh, excess unless I'm just dripping in money. Mm -hmm. But for the most time, I'm doing exclusive drops, collaborations, uh -huh. and I would say good brand building with uh -huh. some good content. But it's more collabs. So what's what's your background? I know you've been in some sports, right? Ah, I played professional soccer. That's soccer. What, so if you look at the way I look, like I look like a coach. I feel like I want to be a soccer coach, <laughs> and it's true because when I was playing, so at my first gig. Um, I went to university. I'm uh -huh. a California kid, born and raised in California. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I, the only dream I ever had, and it's funny because if you look at my first grade at St. Norbert, St. Norbert Elementary, uh -huh. was when I grew up, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Oh, that wow. was all I wanted and to do. And soccer is not typical like Americans. Of course. No? Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> but think of it, when you go in California, uh -huh. we, have the, we have the mixture of... Uh, it's always sunny, so people yeah. want to be outside. Uh -huh. We have the Latin in influence from Mexico. Yeah, we're close to Arizona, Texas, Seattle, uh -huh. and Portland. All these people are the West Coast is a draw for international. Uh huh. So this mixture of cultures, and I'm I'm a, a white kid uh -huh. from Orange County, California, uh -huh. which we get a, a plethora of different communities. Uh huh. So you can play baseball for sure, of course. Yeah. Everybody in America plays baseball. Uh huh. Uh, but you play football? Ah, not really my thing. Too many pads, yeah. and I and I found a great opportunity playing soccer. Uh -huh. Now, me being the only white guy, and everybody else being Hispanic or from Mexico, they're like uh, they call me uh, surdo, which is like left, always <laughs> left, because I'm a lefty. And so he goes surdo, go 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 jump in the goal. Not go green, not gringo. Oh yeah, gringo gringo surdo. <laughs> so it's like white left foot person. So they <laughs> they definitely call me gringo or well wedo. It was like white boy, uh -huh. more derogatory. Uh, so he, they put me in the goal, uh -huh. and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at this." Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. a goalkeeper, oh, nice. so I'm sitting here, and I was like, so confident, and able to like take balls to the uh -huh. face, make some saves, uh -huh. um, and that was what built me. So I, I took sports because mm -hmm. I knew where we were in our in our financial state. My uh -huh. mom was uh, she worked for a dental office, and uh -huh. my dad worked in air conditioning. Uh -huh. It's not the most lucrative business. Like they're going to get paid well, but again, uh -huh. we live in California. Uh -huh. I have a sister, I have a brother, and it's not, it's, uh, we like to call it, call it being sports poor. Uh -huh. Sports poor means every dollar we make uh -huh. goes into training, oh, gear, okay. travel, yeah. and that's all we did. Mm -hmm. So I knew that if I was going to get to the university, because I'm not the smartest dude, I was going to get there by playing sports. Uh -huh. So I, I played soccer, I played soccer, went to my university, mm -hmm. uh, which was U University of California, mm -hmm. Berkeley. And from that I go, oh, I'm, I'm close. I got cut from Berkeley because I was too small. Do you know how big goalkeepers are? Six three, six four. Really, beasts in America, huge. Wow. Even in, EPL, even in the English Premier League, these guys are six five, six seven from all over countries. I'm six foot in the morning. Ah, like wow. how tall are you? Six two? Yeah, around. around yeah, there. of course. See, you're you're the perfect frame for a goalkeeper. Uh, just skinny, lean, yeah, like, long small. arms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I realized I was like, no way. There's no way I'm gonna be successful. Uh -huh. um, I signed my contract with the yeah. LA Galaxy in 2015. Oh, nice. It's the same club uh, like Beckham played in. Beckham, yeah? Robbie Keane, Steven Gerrard. This is solid, man. It was, it was my dream come true. And then I woke up and I realized there's no way I'm going to make the money. I'm gonna, there's no way I'm going to get the, the, the success that I want uh -huh. by making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. That's what they pay. Bro, it's, a Calif it's the United States. What, what other sports do we have? I know Beckham you get, you get paid a lot. Oh, no shit. No. Yeah, I'd pay Beckham a lot too. Beckham's, <laughs> the day Beckham came and he sold jerseys was uh -huh. the day he paid for his salary. Beckham sold more with his jersey that paid for all of his salary. That's why he went so many places. Oh, really? Think about that. He went to AC I, Milan or sorry, he went to, was it AC or Inter? I think it was AC. Uh-huh. He went there and then he went to uh, Real uh -huh. and then he went to Man U, all these places because he sold jerseys. Like, 
jersey oh, sales, wow. bro. That's why we have Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Jerseys, jerseys. So that's where all the money's being made really? on top of his salary. So wow. I, went, I was there. Beckham left the year I came, but uh -huh. we had Steven Gerrard and Robbie Keane. Uh -huh. And that man, just to sit there and listen to these guys talk, all I cared about was just listening. Uh -huh. um, but I woke up and I told you what I was really good at. Then uh -huh. they told me consistently was, Shaq, you're a good locker room guy. Do you know what this means? Okay. How I understood it is they knew that I wasn't the best. Yeah. They knew I was very good. Uh -huh. And they knew that people liked me. Uh -huh. So by having a guy like me in uh -huh. the locker room, it made people happy. It's like a coach. Function. Player coach. Uh -huh. Exactly. Like, oh, Nick pumps me up. Uh, he makes uh -huh. me feel good. He's a good worker. Like uh -huh. all that stuff. And I go, I can do, I can be a good team player uh -huh. and make 30000 Or I can go be a good team player and make half a million dollars a year. Yeah. Let's go do that second one. Yeah. And so I, I had a restart in, in 2016, uh -huh. 2017. What, what then that? I launched it. Then I worked. Fidgetly, right? Fidget spinners, right. But before that, I was with Apple and Pepsi. Because uh -huh. I needed to see, like, what is that? I didn't know what I was doing. And a woman called Rachel Pwepke, who, who walked me into the Pepsi, uh -huh. and she let me sit in the meetings. I was learning. Because I, I was playing soccer. Yeah. I was a coach. Like, mm -hmm. I was literally making $50 an hour, training Lily how to kick a soccer ball. That was all the money I had. Wow. And so it, was, it was miserable, man. I lived with my, lived with my family. So soccer is, like, in Europe, it's well paid here, right? Very, very well paid. Everywhere but here. First, second, third division in, in overseas uh -huh. would, be, would, would trump anything that we got paid in the first division. You can find it if you look at MLS uh -huh. player salaries. Since there's a union, they disclose every single yeah. salary. The average salary now, and I've, I've been out of the game for about five years, uh -huh. is still $75,000 a year. The average, the average income that you need to live, is in at least California alone, is at least $70,000 a year. Yes, break even. <laughs> yeah, good, good return. <laughs> but there's no, that's again, that's not the life I wanted. I didn't, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I thought there was, you, in this industry, you know that you don't have to trade time for money. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can invest a good amount of time yeah. and watch the money come in. Yeah. And then you optimize. Yeah. You can't optimize when, if I don't wake up and go to work, yeah. I don't get paid. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know this more than anyone. Yeah, 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 man. So I, I, I leveraged the ability to communicate, talk, and, mm -hmm. and as a goalkeeper, I realized, if I'm going to lose, it's uh -huh. my fault. If uh -huh. I'm going to win, it's my fault. It's the same stuff here. Uh -huh. and the, the quote I use, it's not cheesy, I promise. You're, they always say, you're only as good as your last campaign. Oh, they, okay. no, they, go, they go, you're only as good as your last game. So oh, if you had a okay. good game, you're like, uh -huh. oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But us, it's, you're only as good as your last campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's so seamless. You have to stay on top, right? Yeah, and there's a scoreboard. Yeah. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's not... 100%. So, I, so what happened with this like Fidgetly, other other brands that you were like, so the, that, that was like your brand, right? Fidget, Fidgetly? Oh, just, myself and a, my partner name is Jake Schmidt. Uh-huh. Uh, so we launched this, uh, a very short, very short lived opportunity. Uh -huh. It was about a year. Yeah. It's a trending product, right? Yeah. And so what helped us was the fact that the bearing manufacturers in China mm -hmm. were the ones that actually did all the winning. Because it, it's, it's essentially four bearings. Yeah. Three to balance, one to spin, mm -hmm. and it's just a plastic housing. Mm -hmm. So we realized, and Jake was a smart guy to figure this out. He goes, um, dude, we don't need to get the plastics. We need to go find the bearing manufacturers. So he goes and corners okay. the market and gets all the bearing people to communicate and all the people to not sell uh -huh. the fidget spinners because it, plastic is easy to make in China, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bearings, those are like, it takes, it takes machinery. To yeah, 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 yeah. Compressing. Yeah. I don't even know the, t mm -hmm. the technicality behind it, but that's where we went to it. We built that up. Mm -hmm. It turned into the best business learning opportunity because what I did is I was not experienced enough uh -huh. to understand the division of equity. So when I started, uh -huh. we and Jake were full owners. Yeah. We're like, dude, what do we do? Like, how do we scale this? We brought on the third person, uh -huh. I won't mention, uh -huh. completely took it over. Changed the culture, changed Ooh. the revenue, changed the team. And I'm going, what, what the, what did it just happen? And before I knew it, I'm like, I have no decision making. And I started this. Really? So I go, yeah, we made money. Yeah, we, we did very well. We started a trend, uh -huh. but it's not fun. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. doing anything anymore. Uh -huh. And I already left my job, so this is all I had. Uh -huh. I met Tim Burton. Oh, yeah. That's he told, we, we had a conversation. He said, and so he said he trained you. I said, geez, that's yeah. <laughs> a good foundation. I, 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 I begged Tim to take me. Uh -huh. I told him, I was like, dude, I, I, I gr I'll grind. I know what I'm doing. Give me the opportunity. Uh -huh. This dude brought me into his office at Agency Y. Uh -huh. And he goes, all right, here's the brands. Let's do this. To every single day he would sit there there was days where obviously he had to travel and do his mastermind stuff uh -huh. but he was training and sitting there and the easiest thing and as you know in all the things that you talk about uh -huh. he just needs so 
there's questions, uh-huh. you just need a response. Yeah. Because we're smart people uh-huh. and we're already understanding what's happening, but you're yeah. like, ah, I don't know. Little, I, little. I could do, it, I have doubt it could work, it couldn't. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But you need the reassurance. And Tim was like, no, you should do A, B, and C because of this. Uh huh. And the way, and that's why, if you see some of my talks, uh-huh. I always try to give, okay, here's my, here's my thir- theory and thinking why. Yeah. Here's the application and how we do it. Uh-huh. And then here's the results. Yeah. Or here is at least what the results should be. Yeah. And that's how we like frame Hi- it. Hypothesis, right? Hypothesis, execution, yeah. results. Yeah. And that's how, that's how Tim taught me. Yeah. Cool. And then after Tim, like what, what, uh, you, oh, you, then you started working with Common Thread? Uh-huh. Yeah. So after Tim, uh, Tim then partnered with DFO and where we live geographically in, the, uh, in California, uh-huh. San Diego, where DFO is based, is far from me. Uh, okay. So it was, it just didn't, it didn't make sense. It was an op- awesome opportunity, but there's no way I was going to move myself uh-huh. and my girlfriend down to San Diego. Uh-huh. Uh, and so that is when I met Common Thread, which is perfect timing uh-huh. because with Tim, we were aggress scaling, scaling, spending uh-huh. so much money. And then I was like, oh, this is how everybody does it. And then you get into brands and uh-huh. then you start dealing with like, no, no, that's not my brand voice. That's not my colors. You had to get a lot of buy-in. Yeah. Whereas I, I think I want to move quicker. Yeah. I want, I want to try to test. I have more ideas. And thankfully, I've been working so hard to get my reputation well. Yeah, man. That I'm trying to pull and be like, okay, let's go test this. Mm-hmm. Do you trust me? Okay, let's go. Let's see what mm-hmm. I can do. And whether it works or doesn't, the trust that people are giving me is they're letting me be very creative. And I find that very fun right now. That's cool, man. I mean, uh, I'm very happy for you. So you, you've been like, there's just like different like learning curves. You, you, you learn from the best. Always. Right? And then like you, now you're, you're ready for, for your big next big thing for sure this trip i sat with ezra firestone yeah because i was on i spoke with him on his stage in denver last yeah. year and i said i was like listen i see what you're doing you're the godfather of all of this yeah how do i get how do i get involved with you yeah so now i'm working on how to be close with ezra how to build with ezra uh-huh. how to plan with him because this man is next level you should scale up because his sales like he's at 20 like he's kind of like he's not growing as fast as before right i guess but he's just but what so he scaled up on uh a couple of products. Oh, okay. So you can still differentiate. Uh-huh. And so although he's he's not scaling necessarily top line, uh-huh. his LTV, which he doesn't talk about, nobody really talks about. Yeah. These people are staying forever. Like the nice. LTV is so tremendous, especially uh-huh. on the products that he's selling, because they're consumable. Yeah. You have to use it or it goes mm-hmm. perishable. Cool. You you'll help him like take it to I nine so. figures. I hope so. That's my goal. <laughs> cool. Um, awesome. So like in terms of the creative, what are the main kind of like lessons that you've learned or like main like mistakes that you've made like or, or you may, maybe you're seeing like the main mistakes that people are making with yeah. their creative because obviously that's kind of like probably 80, 90% of everything, right? Oh, it's completely, I agree with this. So Chris did really, really well communicating this. Uh-huh. So Chris said full, full screen creative yeah. is a must have anymore. You cannot do a nine by 16 or whatever the square is. Mm-hmm. You cannot run that uh-huh. on Facebook specifically unless it's desktop only. Oh, okay. People are, people are lazy in terms of they're only launching creative and it's not like specific to the platform. Why okay. would you, if I'm gonna be on Instagram, why would you not show me a square video yeah. or a four by, what is he said, four by five, a five by four mm-hmm. video? Why, why aren't you? Because yeah. they're lazy or they, or, they, or they don't know better. Yeah. So if you, you need to build for the way mm-hmm. people are consuming on your content. And I, fit, I finish up there, having more humans yeah. and having more people communicate what the value propositions are in the mm-hmm. first three seconds, all of our drop off is literally at four, five, six, seven yeah. seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. If you're, <laughs> people don't remember this though. Yeah. And so you see, I was like, I haven't seen the product in five seconds. What the, f- what are you selling? Yeah. That pisses me off so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second, yeah. it was uh, the manipulation of text mm-hmm. on screen with video. Yeah, so the yeah. text will continue to move. Uh-huh. You can move it. And we never use Facebook's native uh, uh, subtitles. subtitles. It's, 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 it's ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, if you leave it uh-huh. and it's on um, either on stories mm-hmm. or on, on just regular Instagram, it will block. Like you, you can't, yeah. it, it doesn't, it doesn't mm-hmm. show the whole thing. So it's ugly. It's off brand. How do you like keep, keep like up to date with all of this stuff or is it just like more like hands on experience? Dude, I'm in this every day. Like I, I, I joke about this. Uh-huh. What, I would love for you to check your screen time, uh-huh. bro. I spend night, like it's not, I'm not happy about this. I spend nine hours a day, uh-huh. Instagram, social. You're just like, monitoring just what's in happening. It, man. I'm so, I literally, I'm, I'm obsessive about this. What's, what's like a good, like, what, like what, what companies you see are like kind of like blowing up right now that 
like figured oh. out. Oh, ASOS. Uh huh. ASOS, I am. I, that's a huge company. That's a billion dollar company, right? Oh my right? god, yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's typically, why typically they're like, like slow, right? Yeah. They, it takes for them like. So mm -hmm. I would, I would, who else would I say? I would say. There's a footwear brand called Vessi Footwear, uh -huh. V-E-S-S-I, uh -huh. fully waterproof, fully water, and it's actually attractive shoes. So that, it's a, it's a unique value proposition that's yeah. really clear and easy to communicate, uh -huh. and it serves a purpose, and it looks good, right? So that's very valuable uh -huh. to us. Um, I would say, that's actually the only couple that come to mind. I would have to think about a couple Mellers more. Mellers is pretty good, right? The that's the first time I heard about it, because he doesn't do big in the United States. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but in Europe, they're, I mean, they're probably like eight-figure level. Yeah, I would say, okay, Hawkers, Hawkers uh -huh. Co. is big time. Uh -huh. A brand that we have was called ColourPop. We uh -huh. did have them. We, we didn't have any more. Uh -huh. Makeup. They crush it. ColourPop. Oh my God. So ColourPop creates Kylie's cosmetics. Is that the, one of the biggest like Shopify stores? The number one. Jesus. We had get, All we had to do was remarket. It was, wow. they realized what we were doing. They're like, wait, so you're just remarketing? We're like, oh, we're prospecting. You know, you know that list of like top Shopify stores? Of course, like, they're number Colorado. one. It's them, yeah. it's them, Jeffree Star. Yeah. And then like two more below it. Yeah. Yes, I know. It was a very good relationship. Wow. You want to build some like own cosmetic brand in the future or? What kind of like niches you would like you feel the this, most passionate about? This is a good question. I don't enjoy building product. Okay. That doesn't excite me. Mm -hmm. The zero, like the, the ideation and the, like, that doesn't get me going. You want to, you like to scale it? Exactly. Because you can come to me like, hey, sh hey Nick, uh, here's my brand. Uh -huh. Here's what we've been doing. It's working, but it's not like, it could be better. I'm like, uh -huh. oh, of course. Let me, let me look at this. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me see what I can do here. Perfect brand is called Klish. My Klish. Uh -huh. It's a hair hair product uh -huh. sold in Sephora and a bunch of other other products. Oh wow! Zero Facebook advertising. Wow! They are in Sephora. They are in Amazon. They are a multi million dollar company Jeez. built on Amazon. And I'm sitting there going, Jeremy, which is the founder. Like, Jeremy, give me the account. <laughs> I, don't even pay me until I'm done. Give me the fucking account because I already know. Yeah. Dude, this product it's easy to ship. It's small. Yeah. Dude, that and that's what I look for. It's, <laughs> I wouldn't even tell you it's like a specific product. Okay, say you have nothing, and I'll be like, all right, I'm going to tell you what to build, or at least use these parameters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I would say. i say, can I acquire a customer under $30? Uh -huh. $30 is high. I don't want a $30 conversion. Uh -huh. I can still make my money. So can your, can your AOV, at least on first purchase, be $60 to uh -huh. $90? Okay, so that's your framework, because Alex frameworks like CPA of like 40 to 70, so it's a bit different. Perfect. So a CPA of 40 to 70, and now if... That's a what the question would be for Alex is like, are, are you trying to be break even on purchase? Yeah, or are you mm -hmm. understanding LTV? Right, because mm -hmm. I have some products where a supplement brand where their LTV is $275. Oh, wow, but I'm not going to spend $275 to acquire a customer, yeah. right? But I, I, I still am able if it's 50, I'm okay, yeah, I'll get that money back in two months, yeah, right? But other than that, I would say if your product is it's easy to understand the value, uh -huh. it's very cheap to ship, yeah, right. And if it if it lends itself uh -huh. to a complimentary product, uh -huh. say you come to me like Nick, I have these glasses to sell. I was like, okay, what did he, what did Chris have to say? He had to start selling watches. Yeah, because it made congruency because it's, it's an accessory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have a congruent product number two, uh -huh. I almost don't even want to touch product one number one yet. Oh, okay, it must be like some upsell, cross sell stuff already naturally built in. Yeah, same with makeup. You're gonna buy makeup. You're gonna enjoy that color. You're gonna enjoy these colors. Yeah. You're gonna enjoy this lip. Mm -hmm. So there are, you can see the trend of why things are working. Mm -hmm. It's either gonna be consumable 